in their sinfulness, they became subject to Satan. So what now happened? God now made Christ. Look at that, a brazen serpent, not a real serpent. He was now made in the likeness of sinful flesh so that he can condemn sin in the flesh. To believe that he died for your sins. Look at that. So, God's intention was for man to look. To look at him. To find rest in his rest. That, that has been the, the matter from the beginning. For man to rest in God's rest. That is the conclusion of the gospel. For man, sinful man, to rest. Is it, is it, but you see, as simple as that rest is in Hebrew, Hebrews will say, let us therefore labor to enter into that rest. Let's we fall after the same example of unbelief. See, it takes to you now labor to rest. Instead of laboring to labor. Laboring in sin. Laboring in self-righteousness. Labor. It says labor to believe the gospel. Insist on the doctrine. Insist on the gospel. Look at that. So, this was God's intention from the beginning. It carries an idea of turning away from self-effort to Christ's work. A man is saved by Christ's work. A man is saved by Christ's work. You're not saved by self-effort. You're saved by Christ's work. Look at that. In Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53 verse 1, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely, look at that. Verse 4. He had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Griefs, our griefs. Sorrow, our sorrows. What did Jesus do? He bore. He carried. So, he will carry our debts. He will carry our calamities. That is the message of God. The message of God says, stop sinning. No, no, no. It's, you have sinned. But there is salvation from sin in Christ. So, what we find in the gospel is salvation from sin. It's not a self it's not, it's not the exercise of, of someone's willpower to stop sinning. It is to gain freedom from sin. He has borne our griefs and carried us. So, we just have to do the streaming, streaking of God and spitting. And afflicted, verse five. He says, "But he was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed." So you see the contrast. We own the sin; we carried the sinfulness. He bore the judgment. And by the bearing of the judgment, we got justified. We were separated from our sins by the sacrifice of Jesus. See, we were not saved because we chased Jesus. We were saved because he chased us. He came to save us. He came to carry our sins. He came to carry our sorrows. He came to carry our transgressions. It says, by his stripes, we are healed. It is all we like sheep have gone astray. Since we have turned everyone to his own way, verse 6. And the Lord has laid on him 
the iniquity of us all. So what we find in the message of the gospel is simple. That God will take responsibility for man's liability. That's what we find in the gospel. That he took upon himself the responsibility for our liabilities. Romans 4.25 Romans 4.25 said he was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So that's the conclusion of the gospel. You see? That was the message that that generation, the generation of the children of Israel rejected. They rejected their Savior. They saw the works. They ate the bread. They drank the water. But they rejected the Savior. They rejected the message. They did not believe. They hardened their hearts against the generosity of God, which is salvation. They hardened their hearts against the long suffering of the Lord, which is salvation. They did not believe. They sinned, snakes came and beat them. They cried, please save me from, not from the sin, it's from the snake bite. And he appeared in the form of the pole, the snake on the pole. Look and leave. They looked. They lived. What did they now do? They carried the idol. They carried the snake on the pole. You know, in 2 Kings chapter 18, Hezekiah removed the high places and broke down the image, broke the images and cut the grooves and broke it in pieces. The broken pieces, rather, the brazen serpent. This is Hezekiah. This is Hezekiah. Several hundreds of years after. Several hundreds of years after. The people who carried the, 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 the brazen serpent had died. They carried it. The brazen serpent did not die because it's an inanimate object. The people died. The, 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 the brazen serpent was still with them. They had turned, that, turned it to an idol. You see? They burned incense to it. They, re- they saw the works, but they rejected the message. So, you cannot um, consider them looking to the brothers of their salvation. It was just looking to the brothers of it for healing. You know, what can I face for healing and it's not, it's not saved? You know? And having gotten saved, they made an idol of the tool with which God's intention was to communicate the gospel. They turned it to an idol. They turned it to an idol. They brought it and they called it Nehushta. So what was used to pass the message of the gospel? When it is given, what was it rather to pass the message of the gospel? Event, when it is given a literal application, it becomes an idol. An idol is to give a literal application to symbolic, figurative expressions that communicates the gospel. So rather than focus on the gospel, you now focus on that symbolic thing. You make an idol. And you, you are, well, well, I'm, if, you, if you're a Christian, you should have noticed that the, idol, the idols are many. From the water baptism to the communion table to all kinds of idols everywhere. The message abandoned. I remember one time one man told me that of all the things he was afraid of in life, he's afraid of the communion bread. That that's the most the thing he fears the most. The communion bread. He fears that communion bread more than God. <laughs> because of the way people have what was supposed to communicate the message of the gospel had been taught to an idol. The message is abandoned. The idol, the, the, the substance, the, 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 the figures, do not carry on with it. You know, olive oil. Olive oil. 
olive oil that was used uh, was was made to for 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 kitchen work has now become something people are fearfully holding about. Fearfully. So when symbols are used literally, an idol is being created. There are certain things that, that we would have that the Lord would have us do. And it is to be done just once. But some people will not make it a practice. Once, it was just once we find aprons taken from Paul's body and used to heal the sick. Today now we have people carrying prayer handkerchiefs up and down. Carrying prayer That's how I don't wash it. Yes. That's why I don't wash it. Use it once and let it go. Don't make an idol of a move of God. Don't make an idol of a move of God. Have I prayed on um, handkerchief before? Yes, I have. But you will not see any handkerchief in my house. That is called the anointed and catching. That's an idol. If you were to find I went to someone's house and I found several bottles of different oils. Prophet, this one, anointed oil. Prophet, that one, anointed. And she had several, up to like 10 to 20. On the she- top shelf, she just kept them. That's how I don't wash it. You go to this mountain, you are coming with a bottle, you go to that one, you are coming with. You carry this bottle, you carry this bottle, you carry this bottle, Pastor Nayo's bottle, Pastor Marvin's bottle, Pastor Chibuzo's bottle, Pastor Freddy's bottle. Just put every prophet, this one, prophet, that one. You feel, once you make an idol, once you make an idol of the name of God, now you are going to idolatry. There are, there are legit moves of the spirit that are communicated with those symbols and all that, you see, the moment you you will now make the symbol what it is not, the symbol is not the power of God. It's not communicating the power of God. Once it, is, it has communicated the power of God, do away with the symbol. But no. So some people just now take the they now they now ignore the power of God. They now consider that figure the power. They now com- consider that symbol the power. Things that are to be done once and abandoned. Use words. Use words. Jesus spat on the ground, made clay from the from the spittle, and went the eye of the guy. Go wash in the pool of silver, and you will find. And the guy went. He did not gather the clay as spittle and then start selling it about. Start selling it about like uh, anointed sun, anointed sun. To restore body parts. So that's how unbelief behave. The, the serpent was on the pole. They looked, they lived. They ignored the one who was preaching. They took the, the figure and made an idol out of it. So when symbols are used, literally, Rather than use for the symbolic expression it's supposed to be useful, then an idol is being created. That's what unbelief does. Unbelief makes an idol of God's move. Legit moves. Move of the spirit. Legitimate move of God. An idol can be made up. An idol can be made up of anything. Any move of the spirit. That's one of the reasons why Fidelity to the scripture is not negotiable. Our fealty to the scripture is not negotiable. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. We trust you were blessed by the teaching. For further inquiries about learning Christ with Pastor Temidayo Jolayemi, do well to drop us a mail on argilscitychurch at gmail.com. We will be glad to answer your questions. Till the next broadcast, we see Jesus.